Gizmo is an action-adventure game made by Capcom in 2002. It's a title based on the NES classic Ghost and Goblins. Yeah, you know that excruciatingly hard game our NES children played as kids? Well, it's back in 3D. Well, it's not the same game, but if Ghost and Goblins was 3 d arised this would be the game, I reckon. The story is very basic. The game takes place in a world where no one's words the game takes place in a world where no one's words can match the lip movements. I control your kingdom now, as I control the power of the underworld. So Our hero, Maximo, is on a mission to save Sophia from the evil Achilles, whose plot is to take whose plot is to take control over the undead. And Achilles is mean. General! <laughs> Your orders were to kill Maximo, so here is your reward. I'm alive! Guards! Yes, my lord! Take the general away and torture him until he dies. <laughs> Maximo. Your fate will not be so pleasant. See? Maximo tries to stop Achilles. But he's too strong for Maximo, so he strikes him down and Maximo dies. It's not a good thing, why are you smiling? After dying, Maximo is approached by Death, or the Grim Reaper, and basically Death explains that Achilles is using this giant drill to mine souls from the undead or from the dead, creating an unholy undead army. And this means that death is out of a job, because death's job is to carry the souls of the living to the world of the dead. So he's out of, he's got no money now, and he needs Maximo to stop Achilles from taking his job. On the way to stopping Achilles, Maximo must rescue the four sorceresses that have become victim to Achilles' evil plan. Not only is the art and music based on the NES classic, but so is the difficulty. It's not as cramp inducing as Ghost and Goblins was for the NES, but it's still a very challenging game. My copy, however, didn't come with an instruction manual, so I had to figure it out all by myself, without any help at all, for the first hour or so. It was just me working it out. Are you looking at a walkthrough? What? Get out! 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 How many times have I told you? Game time is my time! I've told you a million times! Leave me alone! Although not really a 3D platformer, this game is structured as if it was. It has hub worlds, and within those hub worlds, there are three levels. And after you get through those three levels, you've got a boss at the end of the level at the end of the hub world. The last level of the hub world is the boss. And then you go on to the next hub world. Hub world. Hub world. In total, there are five hub worlds to complete. As the player progresses through the game, the levels become harder and harder. Once the player has completed a level, they get a score of mastery. To get 100% mastery in a level, the player must collect every coin, defeat every enemy, and find every chest, even the hidden ones. I didn't bother doing this because the bosses are very easy compared to the levels, which I find very interesting and strange, because usually it's the other way around. Although the strategy to defeating each boss is different enough to keep the bosses interesting. Speaking of interesting bosses... Come get some! Ugh. After defeating each boss and rescuing the Maiden, you get a choice between saving your game, refilling your armor and health, and a getting a kiss from the Maiden. The kiss does nothing immediately, but it has something to do with unlocking art at the end of the game. The game has some platforming elements to it as well. Jumping across platforms safely becomes a necessity, but over jump the platform, or under jump the platform, or You'll find yourself in lava, or boiling water, or acid, or whatever. It's actually freezing water. Some of these jumps can be hard to judge sometimes. Which can lead to a little bit of frustration. It's a callback to that retro frustration that I don't really mind. Because once you get through it, 
your throw and it's satisfying. In order to save the game, you must spend 100 coins in this pool in the hub world. It also costs 100 coins to travel to another hub world. Luckily coins are pretty common so it didn't get too Resident evil -y with the saving. When you die you lose a life, but you come back into a checkpoint if you've activated it by stabbing your sword into the ground. If you run out of lives, you, you get a game over. It's like every other game. If you get a game over, the death guy, he asks politely, the death guy asks you to hand over some coins. A certain amount of death coins, which you collect by collecting fairies. Every 50th fairy gives you one death coin. And every time you spend death coins to get a continue, the cost of the next continue will rise. So it's enough pressure on you to try your best not to die. If you don't have enough death coins to get another continue, you get a complete game over and you have to start at the last save. If you have three or more green bars, Maximo is at full armor. As you lose health or bars, Maximo loses his armor. At just one bar, Maximo has no armor and he's just in his boxer shorts. I'm cold. You regain your health by collecting potions. But collecting a potion will only fill the green bar up to the end of the bar that you've already had. You can get more bars by collecting armor scattered throughout the level. If you find some armor you already have, Maximo turns gold and you become invincible for about 20 seconds. You also have a shield which you can throw. The more times you use it, the more it decreases in strength though, so there's a bit of strategy to it. Some enemies drop power-ups. These power-ups infuse your sword with powers like holy or light power, purple, and by far the most effective one, the ice power-up. Once you get this power-up, you don't want to lose it. It freezes enemies, and with one thrust of the sword after the frozen, shattered. You'll also find power-ups for your shield, and power-ups for your sword that will increase the sword's length. It's very useful to time enemies' movements, as well as time your own movements. Find out strategies for each enemy. It reminds me very much of Monster Hunter, and it doesn't surprise me that Capcom are the same people who did Monster Hunter. It reminds me of Monster Hunter in the way that, for example, if you go to attack an enemy and your attack misses, you have to wait until the animation finishes in order to do the next animation. In this way, it leaves you vulnerable and open for the enemy's counter. Although I was very, very impressed with the gameplay overall, it was not without its flaws. For example, the camera. The camera has a mind of its own sometimes, and the only way to control it is by pressing L1 to get the camera facing directly behind Maximo. But if Maximo is standing in front of a door, here's Maximo's door, or wall I should say, the camera can't get past the wall. So there's no way to manually control the camera. It's very frustrating when you want to see around a corner, or you just want to see whether an enemy is coming after you, where the enemy is. And when that enemy attacks you and you lose so much health for the rest of the level, it becomes very hard and frustrating because it's not your fault, it's the game's fault. But the majority of the time, it is your fault. <laughs> the game is very cartoony, not only because Maximo wears hard covered boxes, you can also buy new designs for your boxes. For example, all the animations for the enemies and Maximo are very fluid and it's like a cartoon come to life. It's a very stylish game. I did enjoy the art and the humour a lot. The graphics are honestly some of the best I've seen on the PS2. Except the lip syncing eh, leaves a lot to be desired. I really appreciated the soundtrack for this game. It has that Ghosts and Goblins cliché ghost mischief, monster mischief sort of theme to it. My favourite being the music for the level The Siege. This is when you're storming Achilles Castle. It's a mixture of 
supernatural mischief with Maximo's theme. Overall, the game is very fun. And that's the only word I can come up with. Fun. Everything from the graphics, the art style, the animation, the whole direction of the visuals just impressed me. And they were all colourful and fun. The music was upbeat and appropriate for whatever level you're in and it was fun. Yes, you're in for a challenge if you underestimate this game. It is a very challenging game, but it's not impossible and as I said most of it is your fault it's not the game design's fault except when there's very rare moments when the camera is a douchebag it should take about 10 to 12 hours give or take the controls are tight and the boobs are huge Sophia Maximo I'm giving this game 8.5 out of 10 why because it's my channel subscribe See you later. Luckily enough, coins are prevalent enough. Enough, 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 enough. Luckily, 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 coins are. Luckily enough, coins are very. Lucky, 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 luckily enough. Luckily, luckily.